Hello there, this is the Bookkeeping Master on YouTube. Welcome to part two of this Accounting Basics course. If you've joined here, then please go back and watch part one. It's really important that you watch these videos in order. If you head over to my website, you can see the videos in order and just click on the links. As mentioned in the previous video, I'm now going to go through financial terms. These are commonly used terms in the world of business and the worlds of finance, accounting and bookkeeping. One of the great things about YouTube is the videos are for free so if you get to the end of the video and it didn't quite make sense then you can go back and rewatch it. You can watch this video as many times as you want, it's all for free, there's no strings attached whatsoever. Another great thing about YouTube is there is a comment section below. So if you have questions about anything I say in this presentation, then please put a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So the first term we're going to look at is sales. And sometimes this is referred to as turnover. Now sales are generated for a business from providing some sort of service or providing a product. So let's focus on the service first. Service will be things like providing accounting services. That's what I do. I provide accounting services for people. It might be a plumber or it might be a carpenter. It might be a consultant. All these things, all these businesses and people are providing some sort of service that generates sales for their business. It provides turnover. It provides cash for their business, enterprise, company, whatever it is. And it's the same with a product. So some, business, some businesses don't provide services, they provide products. So the local supermarket is selling products. If you go to the electrical store, they're selling products. If you go onto Amazon, they're selling products. They're not providing a service. They're selling something usually physical that you exchange for your cash. And that's how these businesses make money. That's how they get their sales is through selling a product to other businesses or to the general public. Now, moving on to point two, from a business point of view, there are cash sales and credit sales. So if you are providing a service and you get paid instantly for your service, or if you're selling a product and you exchange cash, for the product instantly or upon delivery, that is a cash sale. So when you go to the supermarket, you put your items in your trolley, you pay for them and leave. They are cash sales. But there are such things as credit sales. And this is generally from business to business. When a sale is provided, cash isn't exchanged, but an invoice is exchanged and that invoice has to be paid within 15 days or 30 days. The payment terms can differ, but that is credit sales. So there isn't this instant exchange for goods or services, products for cash. They're credit sales. Now, a list of people or businesses that owe the business money through credit sales are called debtors. So a business that has debtors, these are customers. These are people you've made sales with that owe you money. They haven't paid the invoices yet. They are debtors. Now I've included revenue on this slide. Sometimes revenue is used in replace of sales or turnover, but revenue can also mean something different. Revenue can mean all cash into the business, not necessarily just sales. So sales are generated from providing a product or service, whereas revenue can be sales plus any other money into the business, such as if you have a business savings account and you're receiving interest, you're receiving interest from the bank, savings interest for that money, that is not necessarily a sale, but it's still money into the business. So that's revenue. Let's move on to the next slide. As I mentioned before, feel free to leave a comment, a question below um, and rewatch this video as many times as you want. So let's move on to expenses. So 
overheads. Sometimes they're called overheads, sometimes they're referred to as expenses. But they're all costs incurred when running a business. So in order to provide a sale, you're going to have expenses. The plumber that's going to go to Mr. Joe Blog's house and do some plumbing services will have expenses that he, she or the business will incur to provide that service. For example, they're going to have to drive to the premises. They're going to have to buy tools and equipment. They're going to have to put fuel in their van. These sort of things are expenses. They're incurred when running a business, usually in order to provide the service or sell the product. So examples of expenses or overheads are things like rent, insurance, travel expenses, postage, and other office costs, wages, interest. So this is interest that you're paying. Sometimes that's referred to as finance costs, but interest you're paying on a business loan, etc., etc. Now, just the same with sales, where we have cash sales and credit sales, there's the same for expenses. So you have cash purchases. This could be things like the postage. You go and buy some stamps for the business. You hand over the cash. You receive the stamps. But there are also credit purchases. So it could be that you're invoiced for materials that you've purchased or invoiced for other things. And cash isn't being exchanged instantly. In that case, these are credit purchases. You'll receive an invoice and you'll have to pay that. Now, when there are outstanding invoices to your suppliers, this is referred to as creditors. Creditors are people you owe money to or companies you owe money to. So we've been through sales and we've been through expenses. Assets. An asset is something of significant value that a business owns and that's the key word here owns it's something that can be sold things like computers equipment vehicles property etc etc so it's something of significant value that can be resold if needed some people can get confused between expenses and assets you know what is the difference well the difference is if you go and pay for some insurance or some fuel for your car or pay someone's wages none of these things can be resold none of these things have value the expense is incurred it's paid for and that's that the same with rent bank interest none of these things are an investment whereas assets are an investment. You can purchase some equipment. It will be within the business potentially for months or years and can be resold at the end of that period. The most common assets within businesses are things like computer equipment and vehicles such as vans and company cars. Now the opposite to an asset is a liability. So a liability is something of significant value that the business owes. That's the key word here, owes. So asset is something owned, owns. A liability is something that is owed, owes. Examples of business liabilities can be things like business credit cards. The business owes that money to the credit card provider bank loans, other loans, and creditors. So invoices that you owe to your suppliers, their creditors, their liabilities. Equity is cash that the business owes to investors, owners, and shareholders. So equity is very similar to a liability. It's something that is owed. But the difference with equity is that the cash is owed to investors, business owners, or shareholders. And this is usually in the form of capital, which is money that owners 
have invested into the business and it's owed back to them or a share of profits. So the business has made profit and it's going to pay that out to shareholders. That is a form of equity. Now the last thing we're going to look at is sole traders and limited companies. A sole trader is generally a very small business owned by one person and that person is the business. They're fully liable for the business. They are the business. Whereas a company, a limited company, is a separate entity. And a limited company can have things like directors, shareholders, pay dividends, these sort of things. A sole trader cannot have directors or shareholders or dividends. It's organization is very simple compared to a limited company and there will be another course in future that will go through limited companies and what these things are I have tried to keep things as simple as possible but I do understand that this terminology may be brand new to some of you so as mentioned rewatch the video and feel free to contact me and ask me any questions that you have